Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you about the beast and his image soliciting the seal of Satan in the habitation of righteousness. Jeffrey Leon, welcome to this edition of Satan's Strategic Command, dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great harlot that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration." Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 through 6, we have the millennial judgments of the saints that occurs after the second advent of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 through 3, Paul says, Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? And this is as the redeemed are in the holy city. John chapter 14, verse 1 through 4, In my house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. This is this is the manifestation of the saints in the holy city during the thousand year judgment. So we know Satan's disposition during the millennial judgment as he inhabited, inhabits a desolate, wasted earth awaiting the end of the millennial judgment. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 18 through 20, where the passage being 12 through 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 23, we have the, the, the rebellion of Lucifer and the courts of heaven, and of course his, his casting down to the sides of the pit and his deceiving of the nations. So we know the disposition of all of the unsaved peoples of all ages residing in their graves for the thousand year judgment. Psalm chapter 110 verse 1 through 7 and 106 verse 10, excuse me, Psalm chapter 107 verse 26. They mount up to the heavens, they go down again to the depths, their soul is melted because of trouble. This is the manifestation of all the people that were in their graves at the second advent of Jesus Christ. We know that every eye shall see him, even those that pierced him at the second advent of Jesus Christ, and we know that they go back into their graves during this thousand year judgment as manifested by Revelation chapter 20 verse 1 through 6. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. So we know that the wicked are all killed at, at the, the wicked that are see that are were in their graves see that see the second advent of Jesus Christ and all those that are alive that have the mark of the beast see the second advent of Jesus Christ are destroyed. They're, they're killed at the second advent of Jesus Christ by the power of God. And this appears in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8 and eight through 12. And then that wicked shall be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So they're all, all the wicked. And of course, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 22 states... Jeremiah 9.22 Speak thus saith the Lord, even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field, and as the handful after, after the harvestmen, and none shall gather them. This is all the wicked that received the mark of the beast, that whose bodies now litter the earth, because they were destroyed at the second advent of Jesus Christ with the spirit of his mouth and the brightness of his coming. 2 Thessalonians 2, 2 chapter 8 verse 12. So their dead bodies literally just litter the earth and the Bible says they shall be dung upon the ground because there's nobody's left alive to bury them and the, the stink of their carcasses is just coming up out of their bodies and this is, the angel witnesses this. The angel, Jeremiah 25 33 and, and, and witness this to Jeremiah and the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the under, other end of the earth. They shall not be they shall not be laminated, gathered, nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. So this is the angel. The, 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 the revelation was to Jeremiah, and this is the manifestation of all the wicked dead that received the mark of the beast that were destroyed at the second advent of Jesus Christ because they had the seal of Satan in their hearts and they cannot stand in the presence of Holy Father God. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8 through 12 makes crystal clear that all of the unsaved peoples of the earth have no more opportunity for salvation after the second advent of Jesus Christ. Psalm chapter 49, verse 17 through 20. Man that abides in honor and understands not is like the beasts that perish. The Bible makes it absolutely crystal clear that, that the wicked are not going to be receive the seal of God and they're not going into blessed and holy and see that hath part in the first resurrection they're not going to receive of the of the resurrection and the wicked dead are not going to receive the of the resurrection and they're not going to the holy city they're uh, uh they have no more opportunity for salvation after the second advent of Jesus Christ. It's over, you know. So anyway, Daniel chapter 8, verse 14, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. This gives us, this prophetic view given to Daniel, gives us, gives God's people the exact day, Jesus Christ, uh, the timeline. Anyway, maybe not the exact day and hour, but it gives us the, the, the exact time that Jesus Christ transfers from the holy place to the most from the holy place to the most holy place to begin the pre-advent judgment, the final work to redeem all of the saints unto eternal life, setting the seal of holiness and purifying the temple with the garments of salvation. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife hath made, excuse me, that's Revelation chapter 19, 7 and 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arraigned, she should be arraigned in fine linen, clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. That's the, the seal of God upon the body of Christ just before the second advent of Jesus Christ. That's what this is manifesting here. Isaiah chapter 61, 10, I regret rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation and he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness and that may not be Isaiah he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself adorneth herself with her jewels so this is the manifestation of the seal of god upon all the saints of righteousness just before the second advent of jesus christ and we know revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6 is the final seed of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell people that are still in their sins that receive the mark of the beast and that are arrayed. This is how God views them as they are arrayed in the kingdom of hell in a graduating scale according to their works. So the pre-advent judgment gives us the final work to redeem all of the, it shows us the final work to redeem of all the the work to redeem all of the saints unto eternal life, setting the seal of holiness and purifying the temple with the garments of salvation. Isaiah 61, 10, Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 and 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 18, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. The pre-advent judgment sets the seal of God as a permanent habitation for the indwelt presence of Holy Father God. Song, Song of Solomon 8, 6 and 7, 1 John 4, 16, for God is love and he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. The mark of the beast, Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 7, 17, sets the seal of Satan upon the heads of all the unsaved peoples of the world, severing the wicked from the just prior to the second advent of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 10, where we have the image of the beast appear, pouring out the spirit of Antichrist upon the world. Revelation chapter 13, verse 3 and 4, we have the, the dragon And they worship the dragon, which gave power to the beast. They worship the beast, saying, who's, un, un, who's like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him. This is the people of the world giving their one mind, one voice, and one singular vision to the to the beast, which is the manifest presence of Satan, because we know the dragon is Satan. Revelation chapter 12, 12 verse 7 through 9. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 30, 36 through 43, and 47 through 50. We have the parable of the wheat and the tares and of the net. We know that at the harvest time, the angels come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. And the harvest is, is complete. The seal of God and the seal of Satan, the mark of the beast, is manifested before the second advent of Jesus Christ. These parables make this absolutely crystal clear. At the second advent of Jesus Christ, there is no more opportunity for the wicked people of the, the earth to receive salvation. There is no other way to prepare the world for harvest, sealing for eternity the righteous and marking the wicked for destruction, 
prior to the second advent of Jesus Christ without the judgment being made man, without a pre-advent judgment being made manifest, setting the seal upon the righteous, which actually sets the wicked in exclusion for eternal condemnation. Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 through 46 makes is another parable that makes this absolutely crystal clear in the parable of the sheep and the goats. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the only holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And this is talking about the second advent of Jesus Christ. And before him shall be gathered all nations. He shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. This is done. When Jesus Christ comes, the, the division is complete. There's the seal of God and the seal and the, the seal of Satan as manifested through the mark of the beast. So this is, this is the seal of God sets an exclusion, the wicked, for a condemnation. This condemns the prisoners that have been, that have been set apart for judgment as judgment is residing upon their heads. Psalm chapter 68, verse 20 and 21. But God shall wound the head of his enemies, even the hairy scalp of such an one as goeth on in, going on, goeth on still in his trespasses. Here is God allowing the Antichrist to appear. This is what this passage is depicting in Psalm 6, chapter 68, verse 20 and 21. This is depicting the corporeal appearing of the, the Antichrist and his spirit residing within the blood as the people that receive the mark of the beast are infected with the spirit of Antichrist. And God is depicting this here as him wounding the head of all his enemies. The pre-advent judgment fulfills and completes the sanctuary service, restoring man to his union with Holy Father God before the fall of Adam and Eve. Revelation chapter 22, 14. Blessed and holy is he, excuse me, Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the holy city. Into the city. Only the righteous are going into the holy city. Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 through 6 makes it absolutely crystal clear. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8 through, 8 through 12. We know the wicked are destroyed. They're all waiting in their graves for a thousand years while the righteous are in the holy city and completing the final phase of judgment. Genesis chapter 3 verse 22 through 24. The wicked are not going to be allowed to partake of the tree of life and eat and live forever. This was the, whole, the, 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 the purpose of kicking Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. They're not going back into eternal life and, to, and they're not going to live on the earth at, when it's restored to its Edenic state. The pre-advent judgment ends the announcement. It ends as the announcement in heaven is made. Revelation chapter 22, verse 11 through 13. He that is, in, is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and the first and the last. This is what is announced in heaven as the seal of God and the seal of Satan, the mark of the beast, is made manifest upon all flesh just moments prior to the second advent of Jesus Christ. This, the judgment and the pre-advent and judgment in heaven is done. The sanctuary service that was that the earthly service was a replication of the sanctuary service in heaven. Christ in the holy place is finished ministering and declaring righteousness on the saints. The wicked are no longer have opportunity to obtain salvation through the glory and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Babylonian captivity is perfected upon their head and they can't understand anything as pertains to the word of God. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Matthew chapter 24 verse 43 through 51 gives the body of Christ a voluminous amount of information. It places the image of the beast, the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan, in the congregations of the righteous. Of the righteous. Okay? 
But if the goodman of the house had known on what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. This is the manifestation of the image of the beast going into the body of Christ to steal souls within the body of Christ. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. We know the image to the beast is the ambassador bearing uh -huh. the seal of Satan. It is is the spiritual manifestation. Uh, it, it is pouring out the spirit of Antichrist and it is laboring within the body of Christ to satanically captivate people that are resident within the body of Christ. Matthew chapter 24 verses 43 through 51 gives the body of Christ a voluminous amount of information. It places the image of the beast, the ambassador of Satan, in the congregations of the righteous. John chapter 10 verse 10. It gives us the motives of the of the beast and his image. John chapter 8 44. You have your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do. You are murder to fulfill all your lusts. It gives us the motives of the beast and his image as the spirit of Antichrist. 1 John 2 chapter 2 verse 15 through 18 love not the world neither things that are in the world for all that is in the world the lust of flesh the lust of eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passed away of the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever little children is the last time as ye have heard the antichrist shall come even now are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time so we know the image of the beast is pouring out the spirit of Antichrist to reap a harvest of death. It's soliciting the worship of death, and it is doing so here in the body of Christ as manifested by 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 18. The love of money and 1 Timothy 6.10. The love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So, Matthew chapter 24, verse 43 through 51 gives the body of Christ a voluminous amount of information. It places the image of the beast, the ambassador of Satan, in the congregations of the righteous. John 10, 10. It gives us the motives of the beast and his image. John chapter 8, 44. As the spirit of Antichrist, 1 John 2, 15 through 18, 1 Timothy 6, 10 is poured out in illicit solicitations to capture the righteous. James chapter 1, verse 13 through 15. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. For man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. So the image of the beast is planting the seeds of death for harvest. Obadiah 15, 16, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Luke chapter 4, verse 1 through 13, Satan tempting Jesus in the wilderness is an exact facsimile of what the image of the beast is doing in the congregations of the righteous today. And finally, John chapter 16, verse 1 through, th through 3, where the image to the beast in fulfillment of its glory supplants its glory and the worship of death into the body of Christ. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. They shall kick you out of the synagogues. The time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. So this is to gather those who were at that one time abiding in mercy and grace, justification and by faith in spiritual captivity, unawares of their forthcoming destruction. This sliding away, this backsliding in the, and creating this fault, this body of false apostate Christianities that appear appears in Revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6 is also depicted here in Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9 through 13 verse 18 and 15 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 2 verse 8 through 12 and Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 17 through 21 God does not force anyone into heaven Romans chapter 8 verse 5 through 8 Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 God's presence applies righteousness light and love into the hearts of his creation qualities of holiness Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen it's cognizance of God's goodness and presence and God never forces his presence within man to obtain 
obtain residence, a manifestation of democratic process, another benefit of his holiness, and only those inhabited by love will be allowed to enter into the gates of the holy city. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, where we witness the desolation and habit of the habitation of man as the ruin of man's habitation is made perfect by the mark of the beast. And the false doctrines of once saved also the false doctrine of once saved, always saved, is a man, is a myth, man applied to his own imagination to quiet his own conscience. Re Revelation chapter 12, 12, verse 7 through 9, where we have Satan, Lucifer, turning into Satan and being cast out of heaven. Ezekiel 33, verse 18 and 19. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 24. And Jude chapter 6. Jude verse 6. So as today's reality of the presence and appearance, appearance of the beast and his image is applied to the truth of God's holy word, this awareness of the spirit of Antichrist and its operational ca capacity might very well be man's last opportunity to drink from the springs of life and eat the bread of life and be renewed in the spirit of his mind. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. And be renewed in the spirit of your, of your mind and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We know exactly what the beast in its image is, pur pur is pur purposely laboring for in the temple of God. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 11 through 13. It is laboring to redirect worship of the creature away from holiness into its own image and imagination and perception of temporal glory and the things which are temporal. The things which are, are seen are temporal and the things which are not seen are eternal. So it's laboring to, to, to redirect worship of the creature away from holiness into its own image and imagination and perception of temporal glory and honor, supplanting divine providence with the cloak of death, taking up permanent residence in the heart of man. Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, not the image to the beast. John chapter 5, verse 39 through 44 Search the scriptures, for in them you think ye have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. But if another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. This is actually what God God is saying here. This is this is the supplanting of righteousness for the glory of the image to the beast in the hearts of all false apostate Christians. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my word? Jesus Christ here is talking about the seal of God as manifested in the Ten Commandments that are eternal. They were written on tables of stone that were to last for eternity. They were written with, it's the only part of this Bible that was written with the finger of God. And here is God, Jesus Christ is declaring, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his home name, in his, in his own name, him ye will receive. Here Jesus Christ is declaring that false apostate Christianity is allowing the image to the beast into their congregations, and he's it is allowing false worship and the worship of death as the image of the beast poured out the spirit of Antichrist in our world today. It's Solicit the, solicited the worship of death upon peoples unaware in the population, and it went into the congregations of righteousness, and it and it exchanged the worship. Jeremiah chapter two verse eleven through thirteen. It exchanged the glory of Jesus Christ for that of its own image, as it as it labored to manifest the beast in our world. 
Okay, guys, we know Luke chapter 14, verse 16 through 24, the parable of the Great Supper. We know what false apostate Christianity is doing. And here's what Jesus Christ is declaring. He's declaring the horizontal captivity, the, the captivity of the body of Christ as they set their affections and their lust horizontally on the things of the world. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? This verdict that they are, they are horizontal. Horizontally, they are setting their affections on things that are temporal and not on things which are eternal. Colossians 3, 1 through 4. If ye be risen with Christ, set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ is our life, who... who when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Here we have, the. this is what the image of the beast is doing. It's pouring out the spirit of Antichrist into the congregations of righteousness. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 18, as it, solic as it is soliciting the worship of death within the population and... Romans chapter 3, verse 13, their throat is an open sepulcher, with their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of ass is under their lips. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, the pride of life is, is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world passes away, and lesser of it, he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So here, in the parable of the Great Supper, Luke chapter 14, verse 16 through 24, and the parable of the king's son, Luke chapter 22, verses 1 through 14, we have the, the, the complex machinations of what the body of Christ is doing while it's exchanging the glory of Jesus Christ for the glory of the image to the beast. We know exactly what they're doing. We have details right here. We have the operational capacity of, as these people have allowed the image of the beast within their congregations, their blood is infected with the spirit of Antichrist, and we have their works as they are residing in, in a false, false apostle. They're residing in the body of Christ, and Satan is laboring and infecting their blood with the spirit of Antichrist to captivate them and the manifestation of satanic captivity as it appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. We know what they're doing. This is the, the parable of the Great Supper, Luke chapter 14, verse 16 through 24, and the parable of the King's Son in Matthew chapter 22, verse 1 through 14, gives us the operational capacity, the workings, as it becomes op the, of the spirit of Antichrist, as it becomes operational within the souls of those that are becoming false apostate Christians within the body of Christ. And what they are going to do, what they, we know that as the Spirit of God, we know that the image of the beast is pouring out the Spirit of Antichrist in our world, attempting to captivate the creature with the worship of death and the populations of our world. And we know the Spirit of God right now, because of this fact, is calling all men to worship him in truth and in righteousness and in holiness as pure vessels of glory and grace. And so we know that as the image of the beast goes into the populations, we know what they're doing. We know that they are setting their affections on things horizontally because they are infected with the spirit of Antichrist. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 18. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And we know how that they were captivated by the spirit of Antichrist and how they are rejecting God in their hearts today as the image to the beast is pouring out the spirit of Antichrist and soliciting the worship of death and attempting to kill the children of God in our world so it can fulfill its own illicit desires within the United States population and it can have false apostate Christianity administer the seal of Satan within the population declaring Revelation chapter 13 verse 15 through 17 and the appearing of the image of the beast and its full operational capacity as a righteous vessel of God when nothing could be further from the truth. So these are very, here's more proof right here. We have it. We know what false apostate Christianity is doing as it is infected with the spirit of Antichrist as it, as the image of the beast, the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan, is going into the body of Christ today and, and raising up the church of Satan 
right now, today, in the United States of America. Jeffrey Leon, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, receive notifications of future installments. Remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 15. Thank you.